welcome to Reality Hour. I'm Adam Samuel. Today, America's Got Talent Champions. We are talking about week two. Joining me for this podcast is my co-host, Eric. How are you doing today, Eric? I am doing great. I am also doing tired. Um, I was in Iowa for work for the past five days. For honestly, when I when I've got when I get my rest and I'm looking back on it, I think it'll be one of the best five days of my life. But right now, I'm just exhausted. And the good news is, this was a relatively enjoyable episode of ATT. So let's let's excited to talk about it. Let's just back up for one second because you mentioned that you traveled to Iowa. Correct me if I'm wrong. I saw tweets from you this week with you with Senator Elizabeth Warren. How did that even happen? Well, it was not just Warren. It was all the Democrats. Um, I for my for my job, um, I basically got to, I was um, in Iowa going to different events for all the candidates, trying to get them on the record on disability issues. Um, got interviews. Got videos of three of them plus um, the DNC chairman. And I also got to go to the Democratic debate, which was amazingly fun for me. Um, and I got to meet Chris Matthews and um, Al Sharpton. And I got to be in the background of Anderson Cooper's live shots a couple times, which were pretty fun. And it was an awesome experience. Um, but I'm excited to talk about AGT now. That, because... That's pretty insane. <laughs> I just want to say, I saw the pictures and I was like, whoa! And... Uh, Wow, all I could say, but really, really cool stuff. I I was traveling also. I actually just got back from Disney, but uh, <laughs> Eric's got more more of a story, honestly. But that is a story for another time. Here we are talking about America's Got Talent. It is week two of Got Talent Champions. Eric, do you have any big headlines for us? Not to do with Got Talent, but I have one. American Idol earlier today tweeted... Um, a preview video of it's like 20 seconds long and it confirmed two things that were rumored one good one eh so the good thing is that voting is going to start earlier this year earlier in the competition how early my they didn't say my guess is top 24 will be able to vote again that shouldn't be like a twist that should just be the regular i don't know why that's you know what Who, i'll take what i can get I, i'm just happy it happens all right, and what's this? Uh, the second one? Duets in Hollywood Week. So it looks like for anything, the, the battle round thing on The Voice. I kind of don't know if I like that. I feel Never like do I. But I. But honestly, all the other changes I've been hearing about seem good. So I'm I'm optimistic for Idol this year. I mean, I like the Hollywood Week format. I don't think it needs tweaks. I mean, the, what it reminds me of is the X Factor. The X Factor when it was still on, and they had like that. They they didn't know what that middle round was going to be, so they kind of had like those duets in it. We all know how that show ended, <laughs> but uh, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Let's dive into America's Got Talent. Yes. So, uh, I literally just finished watching the episode a couple minutes before we went live. Um, yes, did I? This episode, like last week for me, didn't feel like a Got Talent Champions episode, with a, f- with a few exceptions. Uh, this just felt like regular America's Got Talent. Like, um, uh, the, the precedent from the previous season, I feel like we're not quite living up to this year. Do, do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean, and I know that they couldn't help that, because if they wanted to do a new repeats policy, this is what you get. But at some point, it doesn't. It doesn't so much feel like a, a champions and. Then change the name to All Stars and just move on. Who cares? <laughs> just in your head, imagine it's America's Got Talent, the All Stars, not the champions. Fair enough. Um, this this episode though, uh, it did kind of gets me a bit more the the awkward cutaways. I mean, it's. I I just really don't like the pre-tapedness of it. It just feels so. I really don't either. It's it's my biggest issue with this format. It was coming across more for me this episode than I think the previous one. Where I was watching it, and I just was like, I was feeling like the cutaways, and it just somewhere once Simon Cowell came to the panel, the show just it took a shift that I don't like it so much. Like uh, we got so many more singers, it kind of I don't know if it. It just feels like it became way more overproduced, and it felt like. Also, I don't like the Simon Cowell 
bias of kind of what he wants goes because he's not just a judge. We'll he's get also into that later. He's he's not just a judge. He's also a producer, and he's the the number like the 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 producer. So it's it's like we're we're all living in Simon Cowell's world, and I don't like it that much. Okay, so let's let's start talking about some acts. I I don't disagree with anything you just said, but um, let's let's talk about some positive things, shall we? All right, because there were so. a couple good acts this week. There were, um, I will say, there were there were quite a few names that I was really looking forward to going into this. Um, the biggest ones for me were probably uh, Ose Perlman, uh, Spencer Horseman, like some some big names that I was I was really exciting excited for. Some delivered, some kind of went down in flames, which was uh, kind of insane. <laughs> But uh, I, I did want to ask you, Eric, who, who are you most looking forward to kind of going into the week? Ryan E. Miller and Mark Spellman. Yeah. Uh, I Ryan, I, I totally get. Um, Mark Spellman, I actually have – I saw a lot of people really enjoying his performance, but I have, I have some thoughts about it. Um, but anyway, we will get into it a bit later. Anyway, let's, let's talk about the axe. I'm just pulling it up. So, uh, first up, we have um, Marcelito Pamoyo, I think it's his name. He is the winner of Philippines Got Talent, and he is performing The pl- the Prayer. Sorry. And um, he it's, – it's a very gimmicky performance where he does the thing that kind of – there's one other singer who's coming to mind who I've seen so much where it's kind of – they sing both parts, uh, both the, the 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 falsetto and the baritone, and they kind of do it as one, and it's super gimmicky. Um, but what did you think about this? There's no but. It's just super gimmicky. I I totally agree. I mean, he's got a good voice, but it's so gimmicky that I couldn't get past how gimmicky it was, and it's like. Who cares? I mean, this is not a commercially successful act because it can't be because it's too gimmicky. In like the early days of YouTube, when it was kind of just like starting out, there was a, a singer who went viral. His name was Nick Patera, and he did a performance of A Whole New World from Aladdin. And he sang both the Aladdin and the Jasmine part, kind of the exact same kind of shtick. And it was cool then, and I, I thought this was really cool. And then seeing it again here, I'm just like, Eh, but the thing is, this video did go pretty viral. I mean, of of this batch of contestants, his name, it, it, he has like 10, min, 10 million hits on YouTube. And I wow. think it maybe comes from the fact that maybe I can imagine the hype for this if I hadn't seen it already. If you know what I kind of mean, where I've seen no. things like this. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, like I said, with Nick Patera, he's actually still a pretty big YouTuber. And he makes like, he's really talented. Uh, he was on Ellen, like he became this big thing. And my opinion is that because I've seen it, my opinion is kind of maybe a little bit like affected. But for people who haven't, I would I can understand why something like this is going viral. Yeah. Uh, so did you uh, think you should move on of the results? Honestly. He's on the bubble for me. He's four, between fourth and fifth for me. I think I'd say fifth. Honestly, I wouldn't have put him through. I would agree. I don't think. But then again, if you take away the gimmick, it's not. There's not that much there. there I feel there. like this is one of those cases of story and gimmick like overpowering the actual talent. And I don't like to say this, but it reminds me of the the SpongeBob gif. Of the of the sob stories, which you know it if you've seen it, where this is nothing against him. It's just I would rather a contestant's talent speak for itself and forget the story. I feel like it should just it it it, it yeah it, it, it takes uh, the thing is I don't know who to blame for this. Like is this a Simon Cowell thing? I don't even know. It's just. I don't like that that's the direction that the show kind of is in, where it's kind of who's got the more tragic story 
Like, uh, it's... I don't want that to be what the show is, but that's what the show is. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, any other thoughts on him, or should we move on? Move on to O's, if you want to talk about O's. All right. So, O's, like I said, was probably my number one big name that I was most excited for going into this season. He was... I'm going to say this. This is totally wrong, but he was on the season with Matt Frank. Nope. Nope. Paul Zerden. Yep. There it is. <laughs> First try. Um, Oz is, he is what Eric thinks. Like he is my Shin Lim as Eric is too. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's, he's not as good as Shin Lim. All right. He's not as good, but I, I really enjoy Oz's performances. Like, when he was on America's Got Talent, I was, I was a huge fan of his. He is, like I said with Shin Lim, he's just a demon. Like, it's just like... It's... This, this was impressive. I guess it's not how I could have done this, but parts of it are really stumping me, so... I will say, I was watching it, and he the, the performance starts off where he has moment written on, like, a blackboard. And it looked and, weird, so... I and it looked... It as soon as I saw that, I paused it, I turned my computer upside down, and I saw the number. I was like, okay... Maybe this isn't going to be as good as I kind of remember it being. And for the most part, it kind of, I don't know if it's maybe just high, like the, your, your memories are always sweeter than maybe some of the reality was, but so I you didn't like this. I liked it, but I felt like I remember him being better. If that makes sense. Like, I don't um, remember it, that much at all, honestly. So I, I thought this was good. Um, he's, he was in my top four of the episode. He was mine too. I just think that I, I thought like it, four, but not number number one, but no, he would probably be like three or four, probably maybe three for me. Number four for me, because he's just I just have such good like I remember. Maybe it's just me not remembering. Like, what isn't there like a saying where your memories they're always sweeter than they actually like were, or you only re maybe like remember the good stuff. I don't know, but I just thought O's was better than that but he was still good uh still a solid performance i just like i said like when i saw the moment like when it was written on the screen it i was weird yeah i knew that something was up and i was able to kind of deduce yeah. it and maybe i i don't know but still very good and we lost him how did that happen well for me it was number four so it wasn't the worst possible loss it was pretty bad for me. <laughs> I mean, I was still hyped for him. I mean, he was still a a big name, but it, it's a shame to lose him here. Yep, uh, I'm not gonna disagree, but I'm not gonna say I'm not I'm not pissed about it, but I'm not happy about it. All right. Well, our next contestant, I actually have the least to say compared to what eric might because eric has been following this act for a while it is boogie storm they were on britain's got talent twice they were on the regular season and then they were on the champion season i only maybe saw their thumbnail on youtube i don't think i ever watched any of their performance but the gist is that they are dancers dressed up as stormtroopers from star wars and they break dance to popular music and that's about the most entertaining thing about it <laughs> What did you think, Eric? Um, first couple times I saw the act, I liked it more than I've liked it recently. Um, and what I will say is there are many acts for this episode, or at least three of them, that deserve a golden buzzer over the Dancing Stormtroopers. So it was kind of annoying that, that Simon just gave them his golden buzzer. But um, I have a question. Answer. All right, possibly. so this was supposed to be the episode where Howie gets his golden buzzer, so Simon steals it. Does that mean that Howie gets his golden buzzer another week, or does Simon Next get week. two? Okay. Go on. I'm sorry. Simon just switched the episode, but he gets the golden buzzer. He doesn't get to steal Howie's, actually. All right. <laughs> For me, I, I just don't... I feel like that Britney Spears gif. Like, I just don't get it. Yeah, like, I understand that. They're not even... like I've seen they're, so they're many... Okay. They're okay. They're, okay. they're like talented. They're there's something you might like see on the street performing and you might like watch for a couple of minutes and then you, you keep walking. But it, it's it's nothing that great to me. And it was also a really short performance. Like I they, I was I, they're they're done and I'm I was just watching going, Oh, 
it's over. Like I didn't even, and, and Simon was just so effusive. And I, I'm of the opinion that this was kind of, this was planned ahead of time. Like uh, yeah, this absolutely. was, this also goes back to something that people were talking about with Oz's performance, where kind of a lot of the information was planted. And this was another example. This felt very pre-planned because I just don't, mm-hmm. I don't understand. I don't, I, I don't even know how to put it. I, I, I just don't get it. That's all I can really say. Okay. Never do I really. I don't get why they got me love about the writer. Uh, were they good on Britain's Got Talent? Like what kind of? They were probably about this. I mean, they weren't better. They weren't worse. All right. Well, uh, the next act up is Ben Black. Ben is an act I very much remember. He was actually on the same episode as Spencer Horseman was on the America's Got Talent season, which is ironic because America's Got Talent, the champions, doesn't even acknowledge his presence on America's Got Talent. They just call him a, a Britain's Got Talent finalist. Or he wasn't even a finalist. He was a semifinalist. I remember him because he had this clip where he shot an arrow and the arrow hit a target and the target shot another arrow and another arrow and another arrow and then it hit an apple on his head. And they showed that clip every single commercial break like of the results show, just over and over, and he didn't even make it through. He was cut. Then he was on the wild card episode with uh, Spencer Horseman. Neither of them made it through. But I, I distinctly remember these two names. And I was I was kind of... I was never that hyped about Ben Black, but they kind of really, the producers really pushed him like, this is danger. And this is an epic crash and burn, but not a dangerous crash and burn because everyone was okay, Eric. Well, Simon apparently said that they could have had their first death on the show. No. And that's what Simon said. I don't believe. They, all right, well, go on. I'm sorry. So what I'll say is that I just fast forwarded through this one. I didn't care about it. Danger Act's not my thing. Well, here's what it was. This we actually joked about this like a couple of weeks ago. This was the trick with the four boxes. Oh my god, it was. It was. It, it was an, a more elaborate version of that, where basically they have she has five levers and she pulls one of them at a time and one of them and they all fire at him. It was an elaborate form of the four boxes. And um, it, it fails. Uh, something goes wrong where she pulls the lever and it doesn't fire. And it turns out he left the safety on. I don't – this is – you never know whose fault it is because this is – a lot of hands go back and forth between these kinds of things, which I feel like it shouldn't because it's America's Got Talent and the guy's life is on the line, we're supposed to believe. But it just doesn't work they he resets the levers and they still don't fire it fires once and then it just stops and then they just all buzz him and the act is over um but even if it had worked i don't think i would have been that impressed because it's just it's the four boxes except he was his was five lever, five levers so it was the five boxes and yeah it, it, there's just not that much to say there's not much content in an act like this it's the same shtick we've seen quite a few times now and there's kind of nothing of substance okay i'll take your word (laughs) for it (laughs) that's it yep all right well that's kind of all i've got for ben black i between ben black and spencer horseman i feel like the producers kind of really favored ben i was really more like i like spencer's act more because it was just more exciting and didn't feel as fake i guess like ben it's kind of they're upping the danger. I, I just enjoyed Spencer more, and we'll talk about him in a minute. But next up, we have Collabro. So they were on Britain's Got Talent. Don't Sorry, remember Grace. what year, Eric. Sorry, Grace. Um, they were 2014. Grace, one of our viewers who is usually watching us, um, really loves Collabro. Yeah, uh, so I, I think I vaguely watched like a couple of acts that season. I don't remember watching their act but i remember them being like a pretty big deal like they were kind of the the forte of uh britain's got talent where they're kind of the big operatic like the big i know they're not show opera, they're, boy band. yeah but they're kind of more exactly but in in the same vein but what i'm saying is that it i thought they were like a big name because they won and i watched them perform and i was i was pretty underwhelmed this was not a great song choice for them at all. 
I would agree it was underwhelming. Was it the song choice, or was it... I think that was a big part of it. The big part of it was the song choice, which is wrong. Just 100% wrong. I didn't watch them on Britain's Got Talent, so can you tell me a little bit about what they usually did there? Like, what was kind of the... It's usually, like, bigger, like, more, like, operatic show tunes. This was like, not what songs? Great. Like, what? Like, from, like, from, like, musicals on West End. Okay. Yeah, um... They they make sense as a as a champions act, but I for someone who didn't watch their performances but heard like a lot of hype for them, uh, it's very underwhelming. I yeah. I thought they were like a better act. What do you think happened here? I told you, song choice, song choice is wrong. It shouldn't be though. This is like a big song. Maybe it's just there's too many people. Do you think? No, it, it's just the wrong song type. It's not this type of song I should be singing. All right. Well, we lose them to this round, and uh, yeah, they were they were pretty bottom tier for me, honestly. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's move on to an act who got Eric's golden buzzer on our reality hour coverage, Ryan Nee Miller. Uh, he proudly on t- on Twitter his. His Twitter handle is the Cripple Threat. I think is that is that correct? Yeah. All right. So he is a comedian. He was just on last season, and uh, this was this was probably filmed like a couple months after the season wrapped. This was filmed in like October, November. So Eric, you were pretty high on him all throughout the season. Did he deliver? Yes. All right. Tell me about his act and why you enjoyed it. I just love him. So funny, so actually genuinely funny. Actually, it makes me laugh. No, very few comedians on America Got Talent make me laugh. He does. I'm thrilled he got through this episode. I can't wait to see him live in March. I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought he was he was funny. For me, like comedy is an act that needs more than like ninety minute, ninety seconds. Yeah, it like, was too short if there was one complaint. But. You need. You need minutes. 10 minutes before you can kind of get a feel for, like, the comedian, whether if you like it or not. It's just too short. And it's also, it's got to be very, they got to keep the comedy PG. Like, it's kind of... It works, though. It does. I'm just saying this is more a problem with the the Got Talent kind of... I feel like there should be a Got Talent just comedy, which there probably is. What What is that? Like? It's called Last Com- it was called Last Comic Standing. How, how long do they get on those act, on those... Episodes. Like five minutes ish yeah it, it's just too short and i feel like there should be rules that comedy i i've said this in the past i feel like each act should get an allotted time based on the category of what they do singers you get two minutes dance acts i don't know two minutes magicians five minutes comedy five minutes i feel like there should be it should not just switch based on producers favorites and kind of giving the same amount of time to everyone it's talent can't always be forced into 90 seconds that's kind of what i'm trying to say but ryan he did what he could with the time for me uh he got like a a few chuckles out of me nothing really like a big laugh i rarely laugh at uh, america's got talent comedies unless it's really really stupid comedy like uh kind of like tape face and uh, <laughs> those those kind of comedians where that's that's my enjo- the the acts I enjoy I I enjoy those kinds of things, but uh yeah so Ryan is moving on to the next round. Do you, uh, what 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 are your hopes for him moving forward in this in this game? Well, I saw spoilers, so I well, so I don't have hopes. <laughs> All right. Any other any other thoughts on Ryan? Um. I just can't wait to see him in March. He's he's can't wait to meet him. It'll be fun. All right. Well, next up we have uh probably the third big act I was kind of looking forward to going into the episode. Puddles Piddle P- <laughs> Puddles Pity Party. It's it's almost like a tongue twister his name a little bit. So he is a big name to come from postmodern jukebox, which is Always exciting when we see crossovers between them. I actually recently went back and watched. <laughs> what? Why are we? Why are you I laughing? Just, I just looked up what um, pedal actually means. Okay. I'm afraid to ask. 
you well mm -hmm. it's the episode title so you might as well know um <laughs> All right. Are we going to find out? <laughs> um, you'll Google it after. Okay. I'll, I'll let you tweet me after. <laughs> so, Puddles is a big name to come from Postmodern Jukebox. I recently rewatched. Uh, I love when there's bleedage between the two shows of, like, the shows and the YouTube channel. Like, uh, when, uh... The what? Bleeding when Joey channel. Cook did Fancy is kind of the rise of the channel. Anyway, uh, so... I will say, as much as I enjoy Puddles, I don't think he is a champion. Uh, he got cut, I think, the first round, like uh, of lives. He got cut like in the in the yeah, so quarters, sure. and he also got buzzed. So I, I enjoy him. I don't think he kind of is on the same level as some of these other guys, but he does. Uh, I want to know what love is, and I don't think. I, I enjoy this song. I don't think it's so much a good song for competing on these shows. I kind of, unless you're kind of going with the big epicness, and this was kind of took a performance and kind of turned it into a bit of a joke with the cuts, with the pictures of dogs wearing the Puddles Pity Party crown. What did you think? Here's my problem. My problem is the idea of a sad clown routine on the show. Is so funny to me, and yet Petals doesn't do that. He just sings. He he plays it straight. Yeah, that's not that's not that's, that's not that's not what the act. What I wanted from a sad clown on the show is someone just like doing like doing like the Patton Oswalt sad clown routine, like all right face painting, run to the tree, run back to me, like for, sad birthday clown stuff. That would have been amazing, like just. Just a, a, a neg hateful, neglectful clown at a kid's birthday party. That type of actor that you laugh so hard. But Puddles doesn't do that. That's so. not what he is. I feel like that's that's yeah. like telling Matt Franco to dance. Like, that's just not what the act is. Well, then it's not a good act. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thoroughly enjoy Puddles. I I enjoy his shtick. Like, it's, it's, it's a, a serious... One thing is it's a missed opportunity. I don't think so. I think he does what he needs to do. It's a missed opportunity. I mean, End I don't of think... story. I love his covers. Like, there's the one cover of all the small things. I've listened to that it's so many times. It's good enough to, for not to be a missed opportunity for me. <laughs> maybe maybe you should be that act. Yeah. Or me. We could... I would be the uh, the sad clown. What, so, what would, what is your imagining of what this act would kind of be? Just a bunch of kids on stage running around cheering, and the clown walks down stage and just makes like a just just terrible clown things, just half-ass lazily. <laughs> but that's not what it is, Eric. This is it, it's a yeah, it's a musical. That's what it could be. That's what it could be. All right. That that act would get my vote all the way. <laughs> all right. Well, let's talk about. Another act that I don't have much to say about, but Eric, I know it's going to. It is X. So X is also someone else. And Eric will now share the full story because I'm not completely aware of it all. So what's the story here? So Mark Spellman enters Britain's Got Talent in 2018 as himself and gets into the next Golden Buzzer but doesn't make it to the finals. He wanted to make it to the final, so ne the next year he comes back on as X in a full mask, full costume. No one knows who he is. First two rounds he does decent tricks. In the third round, he does the trick he wanted to do as himself on season the first time he was on, but does it as X, then takes off his mask at the end and shocks everyone. Biggest plot twist in Britain's Got Talent history. Um, and honestly, the fact that he... If he didn't take the mask off, I would have just said, hey, he's a decent magician. But the fact that he executed the secrecy thing and came back as a, and did this whole thing, he's a, an amazing performer. He's not a great, he's not a, the best magician we've ever had on the show. Shane Lam is miles better than him. But his presentation style is so good. All right. Well,. I watched one of his performances. I think it was the last performance of his on The X Factor when he did the unmasking and everyone starts freaking out and I was I was just looking around going, I 
I don't really know what's going on, but everyone's really excited. Um, I did want to know um, these shows. They very, very rarely, and I, I don't. I think in recent years they don't allow repeat contestants. I don't think at all. With very like strange. Talent does I guess. So, did were pro- producers had to be aware of this, right? They knew, but no one else knew. Was it their idea, or was I it? I don't know. I don't know, but th- he comes on to America's Got Talent, and I do have to say I do have a bit of a problem here, um, which we will talk about for his performance. So he does a magic trick where he pulls cards off a off a board, and they have the judge's face. And essentially what happens is at some point during the act, I think it's when he goes behind the board, he switches place and someone else comes out and finishes the act. And at the end, he flips over a card and they say, he asks Howie, uh, can you think of someone? And Howie says, Shin Lim. And this is another moment for the show. There's two big issues I kind of take with this. The first one is the fact that out of all the people in the world... He got uh, Howie Mandel gets his Shin Lim, which is super plant. Like it, it takes away all like imagination. Like it's, it makes the show so. I'm thinking of a word. I don't even know what the word is right here. Fake, Fake because he just he was in on it. Like they were all in on it, and that just makes it. It turns the show into instead of being a talent show it turns into the judges reacting for viral moments where it kind of stops being about the actual competition and it just it's like toto do not look behind the curtain that's pay no attention to them yeah the trick wasn't that great but who cares it's a presentation the other part is that in the end he switches and he takes off the mask and it is actually shin lim and x is actually behind him and the problem I take with that is then it's it's not X performing. I feel like in yeah, the well. past we've had examples where kind of there was one act where I, I don't remember which magician it was, but they made uh, Tape Face appear and they made him appear on stage. But the magician was still doing the trick. And I do take issue with the fact that it wasn't X performing from that time on. Okay. <laughs> Eric, does it? Do you agree or disagree? To an extent, I agree, but I'm not nitpicking it. I just like I just I just respect the guy for giving us such an awesome routine in the final of Britain's Got Talent, and so yeah, I, it, okay. it was a good trick, but it wasn't X doing it. Like it was. That's like if I wear a mask and I'm doing a dance competition and I put on a mask and I have. Someone else do them do the dance for me. Like that's whatever. Just, just my opinion. That's just. What I, I'm I don't disagree is what I'm saying, but I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least at least you're honest about that. Um, well, anyway, we only have two names left, and um, neither of these names are kind of champions, but they're kind of. Big names that I was a little bit excited for. So first up was Luke Islam performing Ashes by Celine Dion and also co-written, I think, by Jordan Smith of The Voice. Um, I think this is the song. Of, I'm going to this. I'm going to there's I know it's one of two movies and I know I'm going to say the wrong one. So I'm going to guess. It's a James Bond song. I don't know. All I it, know it was is- either James Bond or Deadpool, but I don't think it's Deadpool. I think it's probably James Bond. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I had predicted that he was going to be doing uh, Greatest Showman. I was wrong. He did that already. I, I thought he was going to do This Is Me because but he did Simon Cowell. He did never enough already. All right. Well, what did you think about Luke? How did he do? Great voice. Personally, I would have put him in fourth place, third or fourth place for the episode. But honestly, I don't really remember that much of this. I thought it was serviceable, but it was, it was like uh, it was like a good serviceable. Like it was um, probably like a B plus for me, but yeah, not I'll like say B plus A minus for me. Yeah, but... Luke's good. Like he's he's a really good singer. Um, 
I almost wish he would have been like on American Idol. I feel like he would have done better. He's too young. But I feel like not the right style of music for Idol. You know, you could if he doesn't talk so much about Broadway, and he just kind of maybe I don't know does Shallow by Lady Gaga. Like you can you can go for it. I could I could have accepted that. Okay. Uh, I enjoy Luke. I I think he's super talented, but actually there's no but. I think he should have kind of he should have advanced honestly. In my top four, I would have put him through. Yep, he should have advanced. Yeah, um, he was probably in third or fourth uh, for Same me. Same for me. Uh, super talented, but I I don't know what what kind of went wrong here. But I feel like it's better to go out this way than to go like, like if you're gonna go out. At least kind of go out on top, like with a big moment. And I don't think he's like got anything to be worried about, honestly. I think he's a uh, he set himself up. My advice, kid, start a YouTube channel. Great. Anyway, Spencer Horseman. Spencer Horseman, um, the other big name that I was kind of looking forward to. I don't usually like these kind of danger uh, escape artist performances, but I thoroughly enjoyed uh, Spencer on his season. Uh, it's very, I, I don't know why, but I just really enjoy these kinds of, maybe it's just like his performances, but he has this whole stick where he was, it was actually like a really terrifying thing that he apparently blacked out while per, while underwater and they had to like swarm the stage and knock him and get him out of there. And, uh, so what I remember most of him was on his season, he did this, uh, he was like buried alive in cement. And then he escaped out of it. Although going back, I did realize there's some ways he could have worked around it. But here he is with a new trick, and uh, it's it's just what I remember. I I enjoy Spencer. I would have put him through, honestly. Nope. Nope. I, I would not have put him through. All right, tell me why. He's a danger actor. It's a typical danger actor. That I just I'd never enjoy these acts. That's not uh, fair. That's like that's like you being like Heidi saying this comedy it's not for me. That's totally fair. Cause <laughs> it's not for me. But that's come on, you're, and you're Heidi, jumping. And, and Heidi did. You gotta be fair, Eric. <laughs> if there was a danger act that I liked, I would vote it. But I've seen this a million times in different ways. It's just you know it's the same thing over and over again. I like it. I think it's cool. I'm glad we can agree to disagree. So, that's those are the the acts. Um, I guess is this the part where we do uh, awards or first we do results real fast just to clarify. Marcelino, Bo- um, Boogie Storm, Ryan, and Mark are the four acts that make it through. Yeah, I'm gonna switch two of them out for two other acts. We lose Spencer and Luke in this vote. I I would have bounced Boogie. Put in Luke, and then I would have bounced. Hmm. I would have bounced Marcelito and put in Spencer. I would have bounced. I would have bounced Marcelito for Luke. Boogie. I would have bounced Boogie and put in O's, and I would have thought I would have done. Oh, I forgot about O's. No, O's would have been no. Uh, oof. That's actually hard. Then I would have put in. Oof. Um. Maybe I would have put O's in, over Mark Spellman. Okay. Okay. So four awards this week. Best of the week, worst of the week, best judge of the week, and worst judge of the week. Best of the week, I think for me, I would probably give it to O's or Ryan. One of those two for me. But what about you? Ryan all the way. Worst of the week. Oh, pff, Ben Black. Ben Black slash Spencer Horseman for me. I, I'm actually tired. I don't think Spencer was that bad, dude. Come on. He, he did him. He escaped certain death, Eric. Okay, fine. What ben more Black do you is... want him to do? Fine. Ben Black is worst of the week. Best judge of the week. None of the... Well, I'll give it to Alicia. I will as well. Worst judge of the week. Oh, that's always... Well... No, it's a tie. Simon and Howie. For me, actually, I think Simon edged out Howie as worst judge of the week. You're so usually so high on Simon. Why? What, what's with the ch- the change? Well, this week Simon pissed me off. I mean, the golden buzzer for Pookie Storm was a waste. 
Hit me with it, Eric. Who we got next? I don't have the list of everybody, but I have a five that I'm excited to see again. Um, the Unbeatable are back. Okay. Michael Graham is back. Who is that? I've heard that He's name a lot. five winner. He beat Jackie Vanko. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, Freckled Sky. Ooh, I'm very excited for them. Tyler Butler Figueroa. Oh, he's good. Yeah. And the best dog I could have ever seen, Alexa Lauenberger. <laughs> All right. Oh, Where so, are oh, they sorry, from? Sorry, everyone. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say her name again. I'm actually gonna probably edit out her name. Why? What do you think? I don't know. I'm not gonna say the trigger phrase for Amazon devices. People listening to this. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You just like put it like right here. Like I'm just doing this. On the screen, yeah. Um, All right. But anyway, gonna, that's gonna be fun for everyone watching at home when they keep saying her name. Um, <laughs> but I will say, best dog act I've ever seen. Best dog act ever that I've seen. Better than Ashley and Pugsy. Yes. Wow. All right. Uh, pretty exciting week. Uh, also coming up, uh, American Idol. One Absolutely. month from today. Think. It's, it's pretty hype. Uh, I'm super excited. We will be back next week to continue our coverage of America's Got Talent, the champions, and see what stupid thing Simon Cowell does next. I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost at the point where I think I dislike Simon more than Howie. I'm not like, at that point. I'm not like Howie. This week I did, but not every week. The example is, like, how he has become, like, a child who just doesn't know better. But Simon knows what he's doing and is, like, it's, like, two children and one of them, and it's, like, one of them, you just expect them to do it. And the other one is just doing it just out of spite. You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. I will say I am Adam Samuel. You can find me on Twitter at Adam Soapbox. Uh, I run my two websites. If you've, if you've made it this far, you've probably made it this far in the past, so you know what they are. Where can we find you, Eric? EricAsher.com, Eric underscore Asher on Twitter, and bit.ly slash Eric Law Vids.